Okay, uh, continuing on with these uh, these videos, preparing an analog power supply that we have. Um, you'll see that I've got two pages up on the web, on the uh, web browser. Uh, the one for the BD140 PNP transistor, which is more or less a power transistor, and the BD139 uh, NPN transistor. So I'll just uh, you zoom up there. So we've so this is the pinouts. These are the pinouts uh, for these two components. Now I want to get into the video. So here's our um, the analog power supply, which is undergoing repair work. Now a little bit of history here. Are these boards? When they were originally designed, uh, there was a mistake in the design, and that's why you may be able to see that uh, one of the legs on this component is actually bent over the top of the other two, uh, and that's really a, a correction for the mistake in the track layout. So normally you wouldn't design a board layout so that you'd have to modify the components like this to, f to fit in correctly. So it's more or less a hack to make the board work. Uh, the other ones that we, these these boards also were uh, built for us, the printed circuit boards were built for us overseas. So we gave them the design and that's what were made. But now we have our own printed circuit board milling machine and we can design and build our own boards. And so we've corrected for this error. But anyway, so I'll just, um, get through this video here. So the first thing is to remove the uh, faulty components. As same old uh, story with the, uh, I don't really necessarily have to use the uh, solder wick here. I could just heat up the components. It's relatively easy when there's only a two-legged or three-legged component. Uh, it's not that hard just to heat up the whole thing and pull it off. Um, if you had uh, eight-legged or higher number of components, a little trickier. Uh, you, you really want to remove as much solder as possible before you take those components off. So here we go. We're taking those two off and unscrewing uh, to remove the faulty component from the, the heat sink. And doing the same for the other one. And you notice that I, when I place the folding components, or the, I place them on either side to sort of so that I don't mix things up accidentally. The last thing you want to do is put the PNP where the NPN one's supposed to go, and vice versa. Um, and I go and get my spare components, and I need to bend the legs so that they match. That's what I do with my little uh, long nose pliers. You can see I'm doing it there. Try to do as much bending as I can with the long nose pliers just so that you get nice, accurate uh, bends in the wire. So it's pretty much the same. Uh, now, the next thing is to attach the uh, heat sink. Now, I'll skip this bit because what I've done is I actually orientate it around the uh, the wrong way. I really want to have the uh, component as close as possible to the edge of that heat sink uh, because one, the hole is basically biased towards one end of the heat sink. Now, you can see there's little tabs on the end of this heat sink. So the way I place it would normally be the right place, but because this is a bit of a hack job, uh, I actually want to have those legs around, orientated around the other side. So I'll just skip through that. So when I find out, I realize you can see there I've got my little micro uh, micrometer out. And I realize I need to swap them around, which I do. And you'll notice there you've got a little plastic uh, insulator as well. Make sure that's on. And tighten it up. 
check the uh, fit do a final tighten with the long uh, pliers and uh, Phillips screwdriver no need to tighten it too hard There's, there is actually a lock washer between the nut and the uh, semiconductor so it's not going to come undone basically line up those uh, legs now what I'm doing here is I'm just placing a bit of solder on the tips of those legs Put a bit of solder on the end there put a bit more solder on the uh, terminals where I'm going to connect that component up to and just solder those on Now, here you can see I'm doing the last leg there. Now, actually, uh, I will, uh, because basically this is not being attached to the board itself. You see that screw, a nut, it's not going right the way through the board, so it's not being held firmly. Um, I will just put a little dab of uh, a hot glue around the edge of that. Now, uh the only, only issue with hot glue, though, is that it's hot glue and it can melt. Uh, but uh, the so that that could be an issue. Uh, but basically, I don't want the heat sink to move around while it's in transit. Uh, when it's being used, it's uh, fixed uh, on the bench top and it's not getting shaken around too much. So that may not be a problem there. So anyway, I do the second one. Tighten it up, put it on. So just to repeat, normally, see there's a hole through there. What the correct thing to do is to actually attach the heat sink onto the board itself, and that way everything is rigid. So I'm being a little bit slack, but when I got this one back, uh, there wasn't really any problem with uh, bad joints. Uh, it was just that the components had been burnt out. So I do cheat a little bit sometimes. Uh, I try not to make a habit out of it. Uh, so put that component on. Now there's no need, no need to do the uh, usual point-to-point -point check with the multimeter. Uh, these connections are pretty well clear and in the open. So once I've done that, check everything. Plug in the AC uh, supply. You can see the LED is coming on right away. And get the multimeter out. Just check those uh, outputs from those transistors. And unfortunately, you can't see the display of the multimeter, but that checks that all right. Vary the range with the variable pot and check the other extremes. So basically, I'm going from 4 volts up to 15 volts. Check both terminals, and everything is okay. All right, thanks for watching.